seeing that the light of Iman had now infused with the very essence of Umar since the day he embraced Islam. Pearls of wisdom became a feature of Umar, speaking eternal truths that would continue to impress till the end of time. I take you on a tour of some of these eternal gems that were uttered by Amir al-Mu'minin Umar. Umar said, Adatu, fi kulli shay'in khayrun illa ma kana min amri al-akhira. Composure is praiseworthy in every matter, except the matters of the hereafter. The Arabs used to despise haste. They used to call it the mother of regret. Umar, however, is correcting a misunderstanding in that this rule should apply to all things with the exception to the matters of the hereafter. In its case, no time is to be wasted in drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making a case for himself herself before death. Life is so short, the competitors for paradise are so many and your Lord is most deserving. When it comes to your journey to the home of the hereafter, you are in a race against time. And according to the Quran, the greater the goal is, the greater one's rush should be towards it. Consider how when speaking about worldly pursuits, the Quran uses the term famshu, walk. But when talking about the journey to prayer, it uses the term fas'aw, proceed. But when speaking about our pursuit of paradise, it uses the term sabiqu, race. But when speaking about our pursuit of Allah, it uses the term fafirru, flee. So not every ambition in life deserves the same amount of effort. Let your slogan in life be the words of the Prophet of Allah Musa who said, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I rushed to you, my Lord, so that you may be pleased. This is the first gem of Amir al-Mu'minin Umar. He said, composure is praiseworthy in every matter, except the matters of the hereafter. What other pearls of wisdom did Umar utter? He once said, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا Hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable. وَزِينُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُوزَنُوا And weigh up your own deeds before they are weighed for you. وَتَزَيَّنُوا لِلْعَرْضِ الْأَكْبَرِ يَوْمَ لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَةً And prepare yourselves for the ultimate court hearing, a hearing when nothing from you shall be hid. فَإِنَّمَا يَخِفُّ الْحِسَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَمَّنْ حَاسَبَ نَفْسَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا Because certainly your accountability on the day of judgment will be made easy if you start your accountability today. Allahu Akbar, look at the ethic of businessmen and their level of critique and assessment when it comes to their business. How particular they are to whom they hire, fire, their reaction to losses, their focus on detail and their vision for the future. Yes, the businessman is always in a state of muhasaba, self-accountability. The same can be said about elite athletes. What is it that made Michael Jordan the best basketball player of all time? Well, for starters, his colleagues said that he constantly criticized every aspect of his game, his dunk, his dribble, his jump shot, his three-point range. Again, muhasaba, self-accountability. As a Muslim who believes that life starts post-death, you are the worthiest of those who act upon this ethic of muhasaba self-accountability. So, similar to the examples I shared with you, ask yourself, who have I taken as friends? What strengths am I allowing to go to waste in my life? What weaknesses have I allowed to linger for years? Hold yourself accountable for every word you utter. Was it for Allah? Should I have stayed quiet? Am I showing off? Then ask yourself, was I on top of my five prayers today? A week has passed, but is my iman or knowledge of my religion stationary? Ask yourself, a year has passed, yet my heart is as tough as a rock. Why am I unable to shed a tear in the remembrance of Allah? How beautiful were the words of Al Hassan al Basri who said, Ma nadartu bi basari, wala nataktu bi lisani, wala batashtu bi yadi, wala nahatu ala qadami hatta anzur ala ta'atin aw ala masiya. Never did I glance at a matter, or utter a word, or strike something with my hand, or took a step with my foot, except that I first ask myself, is this in the cause of a good deed or a sin? If it is in the former, I proceed, but if it is in the latter, I refrain. This exercise of self-accountability is tough. It is one that requires immense courage and intelligence. So if you lose enthusiasm, remember why you are doing it. As Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, and listen to his words again, hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable and weigh up your deeds before they are weighed up for you and prepare yourselves for the ultimate court hearing when nothing from you shall be hid. Because certainly your accountability on the day of judgment will be made easy if you start your accountability today.
What other pearls of wisdom did Umar utter? He once said, Man yadkhul mudkhala sawi yuttaham Whoever traverses the pathways of doubt will be doubted. What does Umar here mean, radiyallahu anhu? Umar is warning the Muslims, saying to them that if you behave in doubtful ways, then don't expect people to think well of you, nor should you be alarmed when they start talking, whether it's through outlandish dress or the lack thereof, whether it's strange social media posts, unrighteous friends you walk with, or other covert relationships, Realize that people will talk and when they do, blame none other than yourself. People can only judge by what they see, the apparent. So don't give people a reason to doubt your character, nor the religion that you represent. When the Prophet ﷺ was once walking with his wife Safiya back to her home, during the night before returning to the masjid, two men saw him. They lowered their heads and rushed away. At once he called them back and he said, Ala rislikuma innaha Safiya bint Huyay. He said to them, slow down, wait, this is Safiya, daughter of Huyay. In other words, he is saying to them, this is my wife. I am not walking with a strange woman. They replied, Subhanallah ya Rasulullah, glory be to Allah, O Messenger of Allah. As if to say, we would would never doubt you. But he replied, Shaytan flows through humans like the flowing of blood, and I fear that he may place an evil thought in your hearts towards me. So if this was the Prophet's effort in saving his reputation and character from doubt, how then should the effort be for the rest of us, who are far lesser than him? And the scholars of Islam have said that this ethic is particularly emphasized with respect to scholars or those who have a following. It is not permissible, they say, for them to engage in matters that will cause them to be doubted, even if they have a justification, as this will nullify the value of their knowledge. So remove yourself from every situation that may cause disrepute to yourself or the religion that you represent. Omar, he said, whoever traverses the pathways of doubt will be doubted.